Welcome everyone to the Zojo webinar. I am Paul Lefevre, the Zojo Developer Evangelist. Our topic this time is help desk chat using a web app. So what is this? Well, I'm going to show you a small framework. Maybe you'll be able to use in your own web apps if you find it useful. It essentially allows you to prompt a user to chat from an admin page that uh, an admin can access. And then lets you have an interactive chat with the user that's connected to your web application. This takes advantage of the Zojo push feature that we call it. And to understand that, think a little bit about how Zojo web apps kind of work. So first of all, Zojo web apps run on the web server. You have an actual executable that's running on your server. This, because it is the server itself, is totally aware of all the connected clients. These are the sessions. So it knows about everything that's connected to it. And because it knows all this information, it can actually communicate with it. So it can call methods on pages for connected sessions. So if you think of your web app here as a funny little green box, you can see it can have multiple things that are connected to it. Chat pages, these are users that are connected in a browser, have a, a page displayed. And then we can have a admin page that's running separately that an admin can connect to. And then the admin page can request to talk to a specific page that is connected to the web app. So it's talk, it can communicate or chat with a specific client. So some of the techniques that this uses is, first of all, it uses web page inheritance. It uses a web container, web dialog, and then some methods and properties here. On web application, it's using session at index, session count, and session with identifier. And this is to identify the sessions that are connected to uh, the, uh, the web app. And then the web session class, we are using current page and the identifier in order to track which session is which and to find out what the current page is in the session that's displayed in the browser. So with this information, we can design our little chat framework, so to speak, that you can reuse pretty easily in your own apps. So let's switch over to Zojo and take a look at this. All right, so here I have the project open. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to run it so you can see what it does. And then we're just going to take a quick peek at some of the components, show you how you can add another page to the web app to enable chat on uh, other pages. And then I think we'll be done. So let me just run this right now. Now, in order to test this, we'll need to open it up in multiple pages to simulate multiple uh, clients connected to it. So this can be our initial connection. So I'll just give it a name here. This is uh, displayed in the admin panel, so you can kind of see who is connected where. I'll copy the URL here. I'm going to open this up in a in the private session so that it doesn't step on the other one. And let's open one more. And then I'll open another window here. And I'm going to click the admin button here to display the admin page. So you can immediately see on the admin page, it's showing there are two connected sessions, not counting itself. This session here for user Paul, and this session here for user Benny. And it tells you the current page that's being displayed in their browser. Now if I switch over to one of these, Say I just click on a page that's not set up to allow chatting. And I go back to the admin page, I tell it to refresh. You can see that page no longer shows up here as one you can send a chat request to. And if I go back, 
it now appears. Now, if I want to send a chat request to the page, I can click on it. I can customize the message if I want. Click the send message button and you can see here, it dropped a little dialogue down on the page and is asking if uh, Benny would like to chat with the admin. Now I can click no and then the user can continue doing what they want. If I click yes, separate dialogue appears. This is the chat dialogue. And now with that initiated, you can see the communication here. It indicates that the chat has started. You get a message back. You can type. Back and forth and see the message just go back and forth. As you may have seen on uh, other types of chat things. And then the chat can be ended just by clicking the end chat button and it goes back to normal. The user can continue what you're doing. And the chat ends here. So another chat could be initiated with the user. And that's pretty much how you would use this sort of thing. Uh, specifics for how you might use it in your own web app vary, of course. I mean, you may want to be actually tracking you know, how long a user has been on a page, if uh, you could maybe want to pull up specific information about the page if they report they're being stuck on a page and maybe provide uh, additional information that might help them out. Whatever works. But the, the main technique is that you're allowed, you, with an admin panel like this, you can now see who is connected to the, uh, the web app and communicate with them in some manner. So let's close these and take a look at what we have in the project. You can see here, this is the main page that you saw when uh, the web app started. Nothing is really fancy on this page, except the one thing to note is if you look at the super, it's here, it is chat page, not web page. And then the non-chat page is what was displayed when you click the non-chat page button. And you can see here that has a regular super of web page. So that page does not have any sort of chatting enabled for it. So the overall structure of the web app is pretty sim simple. We'll add another page to this in a second, another chat page, so you can see how you can add your own using the framework. And the framework is right here in the admin chat folder. And it consists of you know, just these uh, five components. So uh, let's see, ask for chat dialog is just a web dialog. This is the dialog that pops up that says whatever message you sent to it, you know, do you want to start a chat? Yes or no. If they say yes, the chat dialog is what appears. This is just a big list box that may or may not work for a UI if you're dealing with really large, lengthy chat messages because they won't really fit on one line real well. You could uh, maybe increase the line height or go with a different uh, UI for managing that, but it can all be self-contained if that's something you wanted to change. And then these two dialogues are incorporated into this container. It has no visual components up in here, but you can see the two dialogues that are right here. So we've got two dialogues. The two dialogues are wrapped in a container. And then here there's a page, and you can see here this page is, has a web page as its super. And this page has on it, in the shown event, code to initialize the chatting mechanism. And essentially all that does is adds, embeds the container onto the page when the page loads. And it's saving that as a property here. It's a private property. So you don't actually need to see it on your subclasses. But it's just initializing everything for you, so you don't have to uh, manually do that yourself. And then that has a specific method on here called request chat. This has to be a public method. And that's why it's here, because it's going to be called by the admin page, essentially. So this is added as a public method, and it will request a chat with the chat page, and it'll pass in the uh, specific information about who's requesting the chat. 
And then the last two things that are on here are the companion user ID method, which returns, if you want, a user identifier in this uh, event. So if I went back to main page here, you can see it has the uh, user identifier event implemented and it's just returning whatever name happened to be typed into that field there. This could, of course, return something that was in a session or whatever you want for some sort of identifier for who the user is. Or if you don't care, it could just return nothing or it could be you know anonymous or whatever. So that's how the, the chat page works. And you'll see when we add another chat page to the project, you don't really have to care how any of this works. You can just change the super. The last thing to look at here is the admin page. And you can see, yeah, I kind of crammed everything into uh, one big single page here, just for simplicity. But the, the list box here displays a list of all the sessions that are connected to the web app that have a chat page as the currently displayed page in the browser. That is loaded up with the load sessions method. And just so you can kind of see what's under the hood here, you can see it is just looping through the session counts. So it, you know, getting the number of sessions that are connected to the web app. And then it is getting the session at the specific index. It's checking if the current page for that session is a chat page. So that's making sure that whatever page is displayed is a subclass of the chat page. And if it is, it adds it to the list box with the uh, information and identifiers and stuff. And then in the row tag, it adds the actual session identifier so that can be pulled up later should you want to send a chat request to it. When you want to send a request, it reloads the... Uh, well, not reloads, but it gets a reference back to the session. Again, verifies that it is still a chat page and then calls that request chat message, the public method that is on the chat page and sends in the information. And if that user replies with yes, then uh, all the uh, values end up getting set so that the page and the admin panel can essentially communicate with each other. And at that point, this part becomes accessible. And then anything that's typed is sent out to the user's chat window to display and then displayed in the current window. And the user chat window or chat dialog does the same thing, sends the information back to the admin page to display. And that's how you would, well, that's kind of how this works, how you would use it. Let's close off some of this. And let's just add another page here. And I'll change the super. I'll just throw a quick button on here so we can get back to the main page. And I could add the custom event that we've added to the, uh, the chat page superclass. So I can add that here. And we'll just, you know, return something that indicates we don't really know who's on this page since we didn't save the, uh, the name or any login information. And now we can... Uh, run again here. And again, set up a page. And you can see right here, this page here, Paul, it's the main page. And whoops, the button for our page, did I not make that visible. Oh, I didn't put a button to go to the page. Silly me. So we shall have to add that and go back. 
So I put a button on our new page to go back to the main page, but I didn't put a button on the main page to display our new page. So let's just do that. I was so excited to run the project. All right, let's try that again. All right, I see our new button on there. All right, so we see, again, main page, user Paul is here. If I go to the new page and I refresh, you'll now see that that is showing up here with its page name when I didn't change. It's just web page one, and it now is showing the uh, what I returned in that event. And I can go back, and if I went to the page here that does not use the chat page superclass, you can see it uh, as before, it does not show in the list. You can't chat with the user when they're on that page. And that's it. That's how you can uh, drop this into your own projects and kind of enable it pretty easily without having to monkey through the code too, too much. So pretty quick and easy for this webinar, showing you how to use something you can kind of just drop in and use in your own web projects. And hopefully also shows you a little bit about how this concept of the push, push concept with Zoja Web Apps is pretty powerful and allows you to have essentially communication between the different sessions that can let you do stuff that might be pretty tricky to do in other types of web applications. All right, well, I want to remind everyone, you want to get in touch with me, you can always reach me, of course, via email, paul at zojo.com, or on Twitter, just at Lefevre. If you don't yet have Zojo or want to make sure you grab the latest version, head to zojo.com slash download, pull it down from there. And the project that I just showed you here in this webinar, you can download. You can head over to the Dev Center, developer.zojo.com, Go to that URL, webinar-help-desk.chat, and the download is there. The download's there right now. Eventually, that page will also have this recording. Uh, so that'll be fascinating for people watching this later and then telling them to go to the site where they're actually watching the video. But anyway, it'll be right there so you can download it. And I want to remind people that XDC, the Zojo Developer Conference, is in April 25th to 27th, 2018, in Denver, Colorado. And there's lots of sessions, 30 to 35 at this point. You can head to the Zojo page, zojo.com slash XDC, to see the full session list of what the topics are and who is presenting. Lots of material, often way more in-depth than you might imagine. Lots of powerful things you can learn, people you can meet at XTC. So check that out. Sign up if you're interested. Love to meet Zojo developers at XTC. And I think that's it. All right. I want to thank everyone for attending. Have a great weekend, everyone.